Bernard Jean Etienne Arnaud, born the 5th of March 1949, is a French centibillionaire investor, businessman, and art collector. He is the chairman and chief executive of LVMH Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton SE, the world's largest luxury goods company. A centibillionaire, Arnaud is the richest person in the world according to a recent Forbes report. Chapter 1, Early Life Bernard Jean Etienne Arnaud was born on 5 March 1949, in Roubaix, France. His father, manufacturer Jean Leon Arnaud, was a graduate of École Centrale Paris. His mother, Marie Josephie Savinel, had a fascination for Dior, and was the daughter of Etienne Savinel, who entrusted her husband with the management of his civil engineering company Ferret Savinel in 1950, and later its ownership. Ferret Savinel later became Fierinel, and then the George V. Group, before selling its real estate assets to Compagnie Générale des O, and the real estate business eventually became Nexity. Arnaud was educated at the Lycée Maxence van der Meesch in Roubaix, and the Lycée Fide Herb in Lille. In 1971, he graduated from the École Polytechnique, France's leading engineering school, and began work for his father's company. Chapter 2, Career? Chapter 2 Section 1, 1971-1987, Professional Start Arno began his career in 1971, working for Ferret Savinel, a construction company owned by his father, and was its president from 1978 to 1984. In 1984, Arnaud, then a young real estate developer, heard that the French government was set to choose someone to take over the Boussac saint frere empire, a textile and retail conglomerate that owned Christian Dior. Arnaud had just returned from the United States, where his neighbor in Westchester County was John Kludge, who made billions of dollars by taking his company Metromedia Private. With the help of Antoine Bernheim, a senior partner of Lazard Frere, Arnaud acquired the Financière Agache, a luxury goods company. He became the CEO of Financière Agache and subsequently took control of Boussac Saint Frère. Along with Christian Dior, Boussac's assets included the department store Le Bon Marker, the retail shop Conferama, and the diapers manufacturer Podius. Arnaud won the bidding war for Boussac Saint Frère and bought the group for a ceremonial one franc. After Arnaud bought Boussac, he laid off 9,000 workers in two years, after which he acquired the nickname The Terminator. He then sold nearly all of the company's assets, keeping only the Christian Dior brand and Le Bon Marca department store. As a result of the job's cuts and reforms, Arnaud was able to nurse financier Agash back to health. By 1987, the company was profitable again, and booked earnings of $112 million on a revenue stream of $1.9 billion. Chapter 2 Section 2, 1988-1989, Acquisition of LVMH In July 1988, Arnaud provided $1.5 billion to form a holding company with Guinness that held 24% of LVMH's shares. In response to rumors that the Louis Vuitton Group was buying LVMH's stock to form a blocking minority, Arnaud spent $600 million to buy 13.5% more of LVMH, making him LVMH's largest shareholder. LVMH had been created on the premise that the conglomerate would be too large for a single hostile raider. However, the premise failed to take into account internal takeover attempts. The fault became too large to ignore when Arno had a differing strategic vision from Henry Rackemeyer, Louis Vuitton's president. In January 1989, he spent another $500 million to gain control of a total of 43.5% of LVMH's shares and 35% of its voting rights, thus reaching the blocking minority that he needed to stop the dismantlement of the LVMH group. He then turned on Rackemeyer, stripped him of his power and ousted him from the board of directors. On 13 January 1989, he was unanimously elected chairman of the executive management board. Chapter 2 Section 3, 1989-2001, Initial Expansion and Growth After assuming leadership, Arnaud led the company through an ambitious development plan, 
transforming it into one of the largest luxury groups in the world, alongside Swiss luxury giant Richemont and French-based Caring. In 11 years, annual sales and profit rose by a factor of 5, and the market value of LVMH increased by a factor by 15. In July 1988, Arnaud acquired Celine. That same year, he sponsored French fashion designer Christian Lacroix in order to advertise the company's luxury clothing line. In 1993, LVMH acquired Berluti and Kenzo. In the same year, Arnaud bought out the French economic newspaper La Tribune. The company never achieved the desired success, despite his €150 million Euro investment, and he sold it in November 2007 in order to buy a different French economic newspaper, Les Echoes, for €240 million. Euros. In 1994, LVMH acquired the perfume firm Guerlain. In 1996, Arnaud bought out Loewe, followed by Marc Jacobs and Sephora in 1997. Five more brands were also integrated into the group, Thomas Pink in 1999, Emilio Pucci in 2000 and Fendi, DKNY and La Sommerie 10 in 2001. In the 1990s, Arnaud decided to develop a center in New York to manage LVMH's presence in the United States. He chose Christian de Portsam Park to supervise this project. The result was the LVMH Tower that opened in December 1999. That same year, Arno turned his eyes on Gucci, an Italian leather goods company, which was run by Tom Ford and Domenico de Sol. He discreetly amassed a 5% stake in the company before being detected. Gucci responded hostilely, and called it a creeping takeover. Upon being noticed, Arno upped his stake to 34.4% while insisting he wanted to be a supportive, and unassertive stakeholder. The Soul proposed that in return for board representation, Arnaud would stop increasing his stake in Gucci. However, Arnaud refused to accept these terms. The Soul discovered a loophole that allowed him to issue shares with only board approval, and for every share LVMH bought, he created more for his employees, diluting Arnaud's stake. The fight dragged on until settlement in September 2001. After the legal ruling, LVMH sold its shares and walked away with $700 million in profit. Chapter 2 Section 4, 2001 Present, Increasing Success and Profitability On 7 March 2011, Arno announced the acquisition of 50.4% of family-owned shares of the Italian jeweler Bulgari with the intention to make a tender offer for the rest, which was publicly owned. The transaction was worth $5.2 billion. In 2011, Arno invested $640 million in establishing Will Capital Asia. On 7 March 2013, National Business Daily reported that mid-priced clothing brand QDA would open stores with the assistance of Arno's private equity firm Will Capital Asia, and Chinese apparel company Xinhe Company, Limited in Beijing. In February 2014, Arno entered into a joint venture with the Italian fashion brand Marco de Vincenzo, taking a minority 45% stake in the firm. In April 2017, Arno announced the acquisition of Christian Dior Haute Couture, leather, both men's and women's ready-to-wear, and footwear lines, which integrated the entire Christian Dior brand within LVMH by January 2018. Arnaud had led the company to record sales of €42.6 billion Euros in 2017, up 13% over the previous year, as all divisions turned in strong performances. That same year, the net profit increased 29%. In November 2019, Arnaud planned to acquire Tiffany & Company for approximately US$16.2 billion. The deal was expected to close by June 2020. LVMH then issued a statement in September 2020 indicating that the takeover would not proceed, and that the deal was invalid because of Tiffany's handling of the business during the COVID-19 pandemic. Subsequently, Tiffany filed suit against LVMH, asking the court to compel the purchase or to assess damages against the defendant, LVMH planned to countersue, alleging that mismanagement had invalidated the purchase agreement. In mid-September 2020, 
A reliable source told Forbes that the reason for Arno's decision to cancel the Tiffany purchase was purely financial, Tiffany was paying millions in dividends to shareholders despite a financial loss of 32 million US dollars during the pandemic. Upon examination of financial records, Arno discovered that some 70 million US dollars had already been paid out by Tiffany, with an additional 70 million US dollars scheduled to be paid in November 2020. LVMH filed a counterclaim against the court action commenced by Tiffany, a statement issued by LMVH blamed Tiffany's mismanagement during the pandemic and claimed that it was burning cash and reporting losses. In late October 2020 Tiffany and LVMH agreed to the original takeover plan, though at a slightly reduced price of nearly $16 billion, a minor reduction of 2.6% from the aforementioned deal. The new deal reduced the amount paid per share by LVMH from the original price of $135 to $131.50. LVMH completed the purchase of Tiffany in January 2021. Under Arno's leadership, LVMH has grown to become the largest company by market capitalization in the Eurozone, with a record of €313 billion Euros as of May 2021. Arno has promoted decisions towards decentralizing the group's brands as a business strategy. As a result of these measures, brands under the LVMH umbrella such as Tiffany are still viewed independent firms with their own history. For a very brief period on May 24, 2021, Arno temporarily became the richest man in the world, surpassing Jeff Bezos with a net worth of $187.3 billion. A few hours later, However, Amazon stock ticked up and Jeff Bezos retook the spot. Chapter 2 Section 5, 1 MDB From 2010 until 2013, Arno was a member of the board of advisors of the Malaysian 1 MDB Fund. Chapter 2 Section 6, Other Investments In 1998, with businessman Albert Frere he purchased Chateau Cheval Blanc in a personal capacity. LVMH acquired Arno's share in 2009 to add to the group's other wine property Chateau Dequam. From 1998 to 2001, Arno invested in a variety of web companies such as Boo.com, Liberty Surf, and ZBank through his holding Europatweb. Group Arno also invested in Netflix in 1999. In 2007, Blue Capital announced that Arno owns jointly with the California property firm Colony Capital 10.69% of France's largest supermarket retailer and the world's second largest food distributor Carrefour. In 2008, he entered the yacht business and bought Princess Yachts for €253 million. Euros. He subsequently took control of Royal Van Lent for an almost identical amount. Chapter 3 Art Collector Arno's collection includes work by Picasso, Eve Klein, Henry Moore, and Andy Warhol. He was also instrumental in establishing LVMH as a major patron of art in France. The LVMH Young Fashion Designer was created as an international competition open to students from fine arts schools. Every year, the winner is awarded a grant to support the creation of the designer's own label and with a year of mentorship. From 1999 to 2003, he owned Philips de Puri and Company, an art auction house, and bought out the first French auctioneer, Tajan. In 2006, Arnaud started the building project of the Louis Vuitton Foundation. Dedicated to creation and contemporary art, the building was designed by the architect Frank Gehry. The foundation's grand opening at the Jardin d'Oclimatation Paris was held on 20 October 2014. Chapter 4, Personal Life Chapter 4 Section 1, Family In 1973, he married Enduvrin, and they had two children together, Delphine and Antoine. They separated in 1990. In 1991, he married Helene Mercier, a Canadian concert pianist, and they have three children. They live in Paris. His children Delphine, Antoine, Alexandre and Frédéric all have official roles in brands controlled by Arnaud, along with his niece Stephanie Watin Arnaud. Since 2010, 
Bernard Arnault has been the father-in-law of Xavier Neal, a French billionaire businessman, active in the telecommunications and technology, who is the partner of his daughter Delphine. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Wealth In April 2018, he became the richest person in fashion, topping Zara's Amancio Ortega. Arno briefly surpassed Jeff Bezos to become the richest person in the world in December 2019. He again became the world's richest person for a short time in January 2020. Forbes estimates his fortune to be $181 billion. Arno owned the 70 meters converted research vessel Amadeus, which was sold in late 2015. His current 101.5 meters yacht Symphony was built in the Netherlands by Fedship. In July 2019, Arno became the second richest man in the world, with a net worth of $103 billion. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Arno saw his wealth shrink by $30 billion as sales of luxury goods plummeted. On the 24th of May 2021, he regained the status of wealthiest man in the world, with his net worth climbing to $186.3 billion. This occurred as sales of LVMH's luxury goods surged in China and other parts of Asia. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Request for Belgian Nationality In 2013, it was disclosed that Arno planned to apply for Belgian citizenship and was considering moving to Belgium. In April 2013, Arno said that he had been misquoted and that he never intended to leave France, I repeatedly said that I would stay as a resident in France and that I would continue to pay my taxes. Today, I decided to remove any ambiguity. I withdraw my request of Belgian nationality. Requesting Belgian nationality was to better protect the foundation that I created with the sole purpose of ensuring the continuity and integrity of the LVMH group if I were to disappear. On 10 April 2013, Arnaud announced he had decided to abandon his application for Belgian citizenship, saying he did not want the move to be misinterpreted as a measure of tax evasion, at a time when France faced economic and social challenges. Arnaud also stated several employees requested to leave France for tax purposes but he declined their requests, explaining the 75% tax would not raise a lot of revenue but should prove less divisive, as now it was set to be levied on firms rather than people, and only due to stay in place for two years. Chapter 5 – Awards Commandeur de la Légion d'Honneur Grand Ophier de la Légion d'Honneur The Woodrow Wilson Award for Global Corporate Citizenship Honorary Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire the Museum of Modern Arts David Rockefeller Award